Hello everyone et bonjour à tout le monde. Uh, je vous adresse aujourd'hui des territoires traditionnels des Mississauga, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee et Huron-Wendat. I'm addressing you today from the traditional territories of the Mississauga, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee and the Huron-Wendat. Before we enter into the, uh, the topic of our press conference today, I want to um, take a moment just to pay notice uh, and to, to draw our attention to the ongoing crisis uh, in our country with respect to the COVID pandemic. And it's uh, very important that we, we never forget that we are in the grips of it and that this second wave is proving to be worse than the first. We have seen record cases and deaths in several parts of the country during the second wave. Des nombreux records de cas et de décès dans plusieurs régions du pays. We are on track for a higher death toll in long-term care in this wave than in the first. And just to be clear, this is avoidable. We have the worst record in the OECD uh, for deaths in long-term care. So that's the worst record amongst rich nations uh, for the proportion of deaths in long-term care. Notre record de cas de décès dans nos centres de soins de longue durée est le pire parmi tous les pays riches uh, du monde. So we continue to pay the price for not listening to our experts. We continue to see confusion in vaccine distribution and prioritization as a result, and also a failure to prioritize long-term care homes where we know that more than three quarters of our long-term care, sorry, of our deaths uh, have taken place. Alors, nous continuons d'ignorer uh, nos experts et, le, et de d'ignorer leurs uh, conseils. Et le résultat, c'est une confusion sur le processus de distribution des vaccins et une dépriorisation uh, des vaccins dans nos centres de soins de longue durée, où on sait que la plupart, trois, trois quarts de nos morts uh, se, se, um, uh, se, se trouvent. Alors, um, le Parti vert, um, nous avons, um, comme toujours, uh, proposé. Um, we have proposed and called for, for months now, a rapid response in our intergovernmental uh, COVID-19 task force composed of the health experts and officials that would be mandated to develop the national thresholds which would trigger predetermined directives, coordinated messaging on the use of uh, personal protective equipment, unified national coding, national testing and tracing protocols, and the immediate implementation of the recommendations of health experts for long-term care. And I say this as someone who is a mother, I imagine if we had uh, seen even one death in our nursery schools, uh, one death in our kindergartens, would we be talking for one second about whose responsibility it is to act? Alors, il faut avoir un groupe, groupe de travail intergouvernemental sur l'intervention rapide pour la COVID-19. Uh, ce devrait être leur mandat de développer les seuils nationaux qui déclenchent des directives uh, prédéterminées, uh, des messages coordonnés, uh, un système de codage national unifié, uh, des protocoles nationaux de tests et, et traçage et aussi un plan urgent pour implémenter les recommandations de nos experts de santé sur la protection des résidents et travailleuses des CHSLD. Moi, je suis maire et imaginez-vous pour un moment si on aura eu même un cas d'infection um, et de mort uh, dans une garderie. Imaginez-vous si uh, nos, uh, nos, uh, nos officiels, notre leadership serait en train de disputer qui est responsable pour régler l'affaire. So people are ready to go and what is needed are clear instructions. And I must say that the only question that should be asked every day until we are through this period of the pandemic is how do we stop the deaths? How do we stop the infections? And how do we help people get through this as best they can? And in that respect, I turn uh, to talk now about our, um, this scandal in Serb. Our government continues to refuse to withdraw its demand for Serb, Serb repayments despite the messaging mix-up, which was solely their fault. 
And for context, we know that uh, Canada Revenue uh, Agency agents in the early days of the CERB rollout, we know that the information and instructions they were given was faulty. And that was information that they passed on to the people in Canada who called them in good faith asking about their eligibility. Uh, dans les premiers jours de déploiement uh, du PCU, on sait que les agents uh, des centres d'appel ont reçu des mauvaises uh, instructions et ils ont passé cette information à les uh, personnes qui ont contacté, leur contacté pour uh, recevoir l'information sur uh, leur admissibilité. We know that the website was also faulty during, uh, during the first uh, number of weeks as well, and that even when it was corrected, it wasn't done in a very transparent way. The CRA has admitted their mistake. Uh, en décembre, l'ARC a confirmé dans un communiqué que le gouvernement reconnaît que les communications uh, n'étaient pas claires, ni sur leur page web, ni uh, dans les appels à, à leurs agents. So they have admitted, admitted that neither the website nor the um, information that was communicated via their agents was clear. They acknowledge that it was unclear information. So on the basis of this, uh, what are the lessons uh, that we learn? I mean, I will say for myself that these are lessons that I learned in kindergarten. No, c'est des leçons de garderie. D'abord, il faut admettre l'erreur. You first, you admit your mistake. This was done, but only done after brave um, call agents um, and unions stepped forward to, to, uh, to whistleblow and to make it clear that they had been passing on faulty information. So the, uh, the mistake has been admitted, that's step one. The second step is simple, make it right, make it right. Il faut absolument que um, l'ARC envoie une, nouveau, une nouvelle lettre um, à tous les récipients pour dire qu'il n'a pas la nécessité de repayer le PCU. They should send out a new letter that no repayment is necessary, and this should be for all recipients based on their gross income, as there is no way to know who received what information when. And so when we are told that the government has said, and we heard Minister Qualtro say earlier this week, that the government is not in a position to forgive CERB right now, that uh, in December they had decided that forgiveness was not on the table and they have not changed their mind on that. Uh, I say that this is not taking those two simple steps, admitting their mistake and doing the right thing. Um, they have said that they can look at the situation and make a better decision once they have information. There is no other information that is needed. Um, ils ont tout ce qu'il faut pour faire les choses qui est nécessaire et qui est correct, d'admettre leur erreur et après d'assurer que les gens qui, um, qui ont reçu le PCU uh, ne sont pas obligés de repayer quelque chose qui, où ils croyaient qu'il était admissible. Ils ont, ils, ils ont reçu l'information qu'il était admissible. And with that, I will pass it uh, now to Elizabeth because you know, we need to remember that this crisis has a human face. And this crisis is an ongoing crisis. Uh, our caucus is there at the front lines of receiving the calls, the anxious, um, the anxious letters from members of their constituencies. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, that Elizabeth can share uh, one or one or two of those stories with us now. Merci, Annemie. Merci tout le monde. Uh, c'est une question, c'est comme exactement comme Annemie Paul a déjà dit. C'est une question d'égalité. It's a question of fairness and doing the right thing. And we've been shocked, and I know I speak for, and I, I know that Paul Manley and Jenica Atwin will also get to speak, but we have been, as Anime said on the front line, where constituents phoned us before Christmas in an absolute despair and panic that they'd received these letters and were being told they had to repay money and they simply didn't have the money. Uh, the, the constituents in my case, uh, uh, it happens that the constituents who had this experience were women who were self-employed, who were in the, one was in the arts, they ran their own businesses, and we were all told, and I know I repeated the information, you have to have had $5,000 in income in the previous year. And we know, as Anami has said, that it was never clear that it had to be $5,000 net after expenses, you had to have made $5,000. For all, uh, We know that CRA officials gave out incorrect information. Other government officials, other members of parliament, including in the government party, 
gave incorrect information. So we, and I, I must say I'm very forgiving of those mistakes. We were through the spring of this year, rolling out uh, millions and tens of millions of dollars of new programs so quickly because people need them. By the way, as I want to underscore what Annie says, the crisis in our long-term care homes is an urgent humanitarian crisis. We still have businesses at risk of going under. They don't. They we still have really important parts of our transportation infrastructure, like coach bus lines, at risk of going into bankruptcy now. But the individual Canadians who were were bolstered by the CERB payments. We kept the country together. The, the economic downturn could have been much, much worse. This was a good program. But people who applied for it in good faith must now, now not be frightened out of their wits. So I had one constituent who actually repaid the full amount and, and, and another who can't, can't figure out how to do that now. They're panicked. They're stressed. And then the prime minister said before Christmas, don't worry now. I thought that meant that they understood the elements that our leader has mentioned. They made a mistake. It, it, the individual Canadian who in good faith applied will not now be forced to pay back money they don't have. As one of the constituents said, I don't have the money anymore. It's in, I paid my rent, I paid, I paid expenses. I don't have that money. So what we need to do is figure out a way. I've also heard from constituents who are concerned they don't want fraudsters off the hook. If someone knowingly applied and did not qualify and applied knowing they did not qualify, they, they should pay back. We need a system that takes each case individually and absolutely forgives the, uh, the CERB payment if it was made in error, but based on inaccurate advice from the government. So if it's a good faith error, no one should be terrified. And I can tell you, we're getting calls from people who are terrified. They, they've renamed these threatening letters, education letters. That's a, a very strange piece of, of um, oh, how should we describe it, Orwellian language. You get a letter that tries, that scares you out of your mind right before Christmas, that you have to repay pay $17,000, $24,000 that you don't have. That's now an education letter. Well, we need to educate our government too. You cannot demand that people who in good faith, I mean, look at the income level we're talking about. If the argument is, did you make $5,000 last year or $5,000 net your expenses? We're not talking about the wealthy and the well-heeled. By the way, our commercial banks are doing just fine. Let's find a way that allows the good faith error of the civil service not to create a traumatizing and financially desperate condition for Canadians who did the right thing. And I'll turn it back to you, Anami. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And really just to underline, actually, Elizabeth, I have stopped calling it um, forgiveness because this is, this is just doing the right thing. These are not people that made any mistake at all. They have nothing to ask forgiveness for. These are people that followed the rules, did their due diligence, did everything they could to make sure uh, that they were um, qualified and they were told they were qualified. So this is not, again, going back to kindergarten. There's no, was it? There's no take sees. There's no take back sees. You know, it is what it is. It's done. It's done. And uh, we, we can't, um, I'm, I'm stopping with that. I was looking for the words. We're not asking for forgiveness, for amnesty, for anything. We're asking for the government, as you said, to do the right thing. Uh, with that, Jenica, I'm going to pass it uh, to you um, for the perspective from New Brunswick. And uh, congratulations on your, Elizabeth and Jenica, on your uh, awards, your McLean's uh, Parliamentarian Awards last night. Thanks so much, Annemie. Um, and, and I mean, this work that we're doing now, I kind of speak to that, is that we, you know, we stand up for our constituents. And this is an issue that we couldn't ignore. Um, you know, so just... Again, even changing the language, calling, calling it education letters now or suggesting that the letters did not say that they had to repay the money. But from what we've uncovered, you know, 441,000 letters were sent to Canadians who were who were believed to have applied for Canada Emergency Response Benefit in error, asking them to repay up to $14,000 or more. Um, so again, this, this money was already spent uh, stimulating local economies on rent, food, car repairs, home heating bills, um, as was the intention. And it, and it, and it worked. You know, as, as Elizabeth stated, we could have been in a much worse off uh, you know, economic situation in Canada. 
Um, but what concerns me most about this approach by government um, is that, as is often the case with CRA enforcement and collections efforts, is that it's centered on the idea that the Canadian citizens um, are fraudulent, fraudulent individuals, um, so behaving in bad faith. Uh, L'idée ici que les Canadiens et Canadiennes tiennent tant de fleurs, le gouvernement est particulièrement problématique. Um, so we now know, again, there's reports that have shown that a uh, significant number of these people were given that improper information. So given bad information, not that they're bad people, that really needs to be underscored here. Uh, you know, we've received some feedback as well that, you know, that, you know, people should have known better, that, you know, that people had uneasiness about the program to begin with, you know, but that's not what the question is here. Um, it, it's really that people did their homework, they did what they could. Uh, ces personnes ont fait leur devoir, elles ont postulé en toute bonne foi, elles ont utilisé cet argent pour survivre cette année, et maintenant, elles risquent de se retrouver ruinées aux mains de leur propre gouvernement. Uh, I have constituents uh, losing a lot more than sleep over this. Um, I'm deeply concerned. We're still in the midst of a pandemic. We already know that, you know, the levels of anxiety and stress uh, among Canadians right now is at an all time high. I can't imagine, um, you know, being an individual who have received that letter um, and what that would have felt like, you know, but we've received the calls. We know people are, are, are at risk of losing businesses, at risk of losing their, their homes. Um, you know, I have a constituent who, who sent in their very last uh, penny, you know, to the CRA at Christmas time. Um, so the real human impacts to this really need to be considered, and uh, I have no problem standing up for for individuals who did this in good faith. Again, uh, you know, through no fault of their own, they received this help in a time of crisis, and and, and we need to stand up for them. Um, so, you know, even before the pandemic, this government refused to be transparent about how much taxpayer money has gone to write off corporate loans. So this is a rare opportunity to waive repayment for small amounts of money to individual citizens. These people received a small benefit, used it as was intended to keep Canada chugging along throughout this tumultuous year. Uh, so I really believe that Prime Minister Trudeau needs to personally step, step up here, uh, reassure these Canadians, my constituents, Elizabeth's constituents, Paul's constituents, um, that they will not be asked to repay money that they simply don't have. Uh, you know, the old saying goes, you can't squeeze blood from a stone. Um, and, and I will stand my, my constituents uh, in, in any way I can in this capacity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenica. And, and that is very important to recognize as well, which is that we we know that in many instances, the damage has already been done. The very kind of people that are most likely to call in and make sure that they qualify uh, before applying are the very kind of people who uh, would have paid this back already um, out of fear uh, and concern. Uh, Paul, I'm going to pass it to you because the Green Party, you know, we're party, uh, we're gonna raise the alarm, but we're also gonna propose the solutions and uh, you know, what you have done recently and the, the petition that, uh, that you've launched is exactly that. So if you can just share with, uh, um, if you can just share the, the nature of that uh, and what we're looking for. Sure, thank you, Anami. Um, I too have had many constituents who've approached me about this issue who, who called and did their due diligence before applying. Some people had you know, made major capital investments in their company in 2019, so their income was different. Um, I have uh, constituents in my riding who are on disability and have self-employed income and they write off their rent and, their, and some of their home expenses as part of their business. And uh, they applied and they did their their due diligence and uh, they're caught in this mess as well. And so one of those constituents has put forward a petition which I have uh, sponsored and that is e-petition uh, 3066. And it is calling on the government to retroactively allow self-employed Canadians to use their gross income before business expenses when determining their CERB eligibility. And that petition has 4,600 signatures. It has been shared by a number of unions. Uh, a lot of the unions that represent uh, the arts and culture community, so IATSE, ACTRA, the Canadian Federation of Musicians, uh, Alliance of Canadian Cinema, Television and Radio Artists, the Writers Union. Uh, there are chambers of commerce that are sharing this petition now, and it, it is open until uh, next Saturday, January 23rd. So I would encourage Canadians who are caught in this situation to look for e-petition uh, 3066. Uh, it's under my name and sign away and I will table this the first week that we are back at, at the House of Commons when Parliament resumes on January 25th. The government needs to own this mistake. This is not uh, fraud on the part of these people. 
this is an, uh, a mistake of the government and the government, the government needs to take responsibility for their error. Thank you so much, Paul. And that's, that's, that's all the information the government needs. I think we can all agree. Uh, we've just laid it out. We've laid it out in about 25 minutes. And all that remains, as so often uh, during this pandemic, all that remains now is the action, the political leadership to take the action. Uh, and as I said, these are, these are the most basic lessons of, of uh, shared values and, and common human decency. If you make a mistake, you admit it. Once you've admitted it, you fix it. And uh, it's just the second step that's missing now. Um, and so, en, en français, um, voilà, voilà toute l'information nécessaire uh, pour régler l'affaire. Uh, dans ce cas, le PCU uh, et qui devrait le repayer, c'est clair que ce ne devrait pas être les gens qui ont, um, qui ont postulé avec toute l'assurance de l'art. Alors, d'abord, il faut admettre uh, qu'il y avait une erreur et puis il faut, um, il faut écrire et assurer les gens qui ne devraient pas repayer. C'est aussi simple que ça. Ça, c'est nos valeurs. Non, ça, c'est ce qui est correct. Ça, c'est les, les, les leçons que moi et Jeneka et, et Elisabeth, uh, on enseigne à nos uh, enfants. Um, and so that's, that's our call for today. And we hope that the government will do the right thing as soon as possible and take this tremendous burden off the shoulders of people that they have promised to protect until the very end of this pandemic. Uh, thank you very much. And I think that that's the end of our uh, Facebook transmission. Merci à tout le monde. Uh, we will keep speaking about this for as long as it takes and we have not forgotten. Merci. And if you all hold on uh, for, there we go. Um, we're going to see if there are any questions from the uh, from the media next. Rosie? Yes, I've asked the media. Uh, so far, nobody has asked a question. Can I add one thing just while we're, we're, one of the things the Greens have pointed out continually is that we need guaranteed livable income. If it wasn't for the absence of this essential next step in our social safety net, increasingly accepted by Canadians coast to coast to coast by backbencher liberals in the caucus. It's been a conversation and a growing drumbeat and the pandemic has made it all that much clearer that we have too many holes in our social safety net. If we had a guaranteed livable income, we wouldn't now be re-examining was the CERB uh, accepted by people who quote unquote didn't qualify even though they were confirmed at the time uh, that they did qualify it, it the complications and the errors uh, again bring to mind for me the importance of a program that doesn't have uh, the, the the susceptibility to these glitches through guaranteed livable income for all absolutely and we, it's something that we normally raise when we're talking about the CERB and it's something that the Green Party has been talking about prior to and uh, during the pandemic. Had we had a GLI, uh, we would not have found ourselves in this place. We would not have needed the, uh, the emergency uh, response benefit in the first place. And there will always be people who fall through the cracks until we have a universal system that covers everyone. Uh, I see the consensus growing around that. I see that it's the top priority of the Liberal Caucus in terms of their policy priorities. So I'm hoping that this is something again that transcends party lines and we can do this on behalf of people in Canada because it's clear that it's necessary and it's clear that it's time has come. Thank you everyone very much for joining us. Merci à notre caucus. Uh, and uh, you will again see us again and again during this period, uh, raising the issues that matter the most. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Merci mille fois. Merci, Annemie. Au revoir. Merci. Thanks, Au revoir. Bye. À la prochaine. Bye.